Hi guys and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time on my channel, you're most welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how I did this Ghana braid wig. To be honest, can you tell this is a wig? Like, if you saw me from a distance, would you assume this is a wig or you just think, oh, your hair looks nice, this and that. Guys, I'm going to show you all a very detailed tutorial on how I made this Ghana braid wig from start to finish. It doesn't have baby hairs. I intentionally did not put baby hairs because I've realized a lot of people do not exactly feel this whole baby hairs thing. They don't know how to go about, you know, working it properly. And, you know, some people have actually made wigs for in the past have told me, no, no, don't put the baby hairs thing there. Don't. I don't know how to go about it. I'm not good at that and things like that. So what the baby hair you guys are seeing here is mine. However, if you know if you decide to recreate your own and you think you want to put baby hairs for whatever reason say you don't have front hair at all and you just want you know that artificial baby hairs you would simply just you know need to crochet some tiny braiding hairs at the front area actually baby hairs doesn't need so much trim it at the end of the day use your gel and it would lay properly like baby hairs but in this case even without the baby hairs like the hair is the wig is dope should i should i cover this whole thing so you guys see how it looks without the baby hairs okay maybe after i'm done with this talk through i would cover up everything so you would see what it looks like without the baby hair <gasps> my goodness the weather is so hot the weather is so 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 hot so without further talk guys let's get right into the tutorial and yes if you haven't subscribed be cool subscribe to my channel do not forget to give this video a thumbs up because i feel it strongly that you're going to love this tutorial so yup For this tutorial, I use expression braiding hair in super braid and in color purple. So the reason why I said in super braid is because expression has three types of braiding hair. They have the rich braid, ultra braid, and super braid. The super braid is the longest and bulkiest or fullest of them all. So I shared it into three equal parts, which is also known as cut three. And then I went ahead to pick the hairs. For those of you who don't know how to pick hairs, I'm going to show how to do so in this video. You grip the hair with one hand and with the other hand, you use your index finger and your thumb finger to pick the hairs gradually. After picking the hair, you go ahead and brush out. You need a really strong brush for this process because the idea is to detangle the hairs that have tangled in the process of the picking. Now you're going to brush both sides. <coughs> So you're going to brush both ends of the braiding hair and after the initial brushing of both ends, you go ahead and separate and mix. So separating and mixing will detangle the hair even further than the brush was able to. Now here I am separating and mixing like I mentioned earlier. After separating and mixing, I like to share the hair into different parts so that I'll be able to thoroughly detangle the little portion I have in my hand. So as you guys saw earlier, I shared the hair and dropped one aside. Now this small portion will be really easy for me to thoroughly, thoroughly detangle. And after I'm done brushing, I'll just tie and keep one side. So if you do not like waste like me, you can still go ahead and carefully bring out the hairs from the brush 
and brushing out again though this will not give you much hairs and the length might not be the same length as what you've originally cut out but who knows you could still make use of it at some point To make the cornrow pieces, it's necessary to have your braiding hair in portions and set aside. The size of your cornrow piece is going to determine the size of the portions you're setting aside. But know that the first uh, braiding hair portion will have to be the smallest, followed by the second. Then the third, fourth, fifth and others can remain the same size. So you just go ahead and keep attaching the portions of hairs as you braid. For this tutorial, I conrolled like two steps before I added a portion. Conrolled under two steps before adding another portion and like that, like that. But if you are going to do the Ghana braid on one's head, you can just conroll one step before you add a portion. Conroll one step before you add a portion. Everything depends on the size because the more portions you add and the size of the portion you're adding will determine the size of the conroll piece that comes out. And for this tutorial, I would not recommend you finish braiding to the tips of the hair because the different areas of the head do not have the same length. Like the, the length of braid you would need where you're placing or where you're braiding on the hair that is closest to the ear is different from the length of braid you would need when you're placing or braiding on the area that is on the center of your head. You get the center of your head is obviously longer. So you can just tie the corn rope piece at some point and then you complete the length on the mannequin by then you'll be able to properly determine the length for all the cornrow pieces you know and make and make them equal <laughs> getting your wig cap frontal right is really really important because to determine how well your wig comes out looking so here i doubled the mesh which i was going to sew to the wig cap and then i used t pins to hold it at the front i intentionally did so at the front so that the frontal will come out having the same measurement as the wig cap because at the end of the day we're going to cut out that part of the wig cap from under the mesh so that's why i use the t-pins to hold at the front and not at any other part and then you know you go right ahead and start sewing but of course before attaching the mesh to the wig cap make sure your wig cap is properly secured on the mannequin like put the wig cap exactly how you would want it to be because there will be no readjusting once you start sewing. Any readjusting could affect how the wig comes out looking. Just place your wig cap exactly how you know you want it to be throughout the wig making. This fold I'm um, forming on the mesh is very normal and it's almost always the case when making a custom um, closure or frontal and that's another reason why i have the t-pins at the front of the wig cap not at the back so that the fold is going to come at the back and the front will be as smooth as possible
so i'm outlining the recap on the mesh what this means basically is i am creating my hairline so that by the time i cut off that front part of the recap i would know where my hairline starts from As you can see from what I'm demonstrating here, you see the mesh is well fitted, that it has taken the exact shape of the wig cap. And while cutting off this front part of the wig cap, ensure not to cut off the band. <laughs> The style one is making is going to determine just exactly how the convo pieces are placed on the wig cap. So in this tutorial, I'm making curvy all back and I'm placing the convo pieces exactly how I want the all back to look like I'm positioning them with the right curves and all that. Now, when it comes to even on a human being's head, the front line is wider in measurement than the base of the head that's the back line of the head so there was need for me especially as this is wig and you know no human being head where we can easily do some manipulation i had to overlap some cornrow pieces on the other so i wouldn't run out of space at the back like i'm doing so presently and um it's mostly necessary as i'm doing curvy all back but even if i wasn't doing curvy all back even if i was doing straight all back the measurement at the front is still not the same, it's still wider than the measurement at the back, so there would have still been need for me to overlap. So as I go about sewing, um, I made use of curved needles and T-pins. Before now, you couldn't have told me anything about curved needles and I'll listen to you, no way. Like, I've always been a believer of the straight needles. That was how I learned how to make wig. That was how I learned how to even do normal clothes sewing and everything. But in making this wig, I realized curved needle is just the way forward. Like, using straight needle would just frustrate you and could make your wig not come out looking well. So I'll totally recommend using a curved needle and I equally made use of T-pins to hold my cornrow pieces at the exact position I wanted it to be. And then I went ahead to sew. As I sewed, I made sure to leave little space between each cornrow piece, especially at the frontal area, so that the wig will come out looking natural. But of course, at the back, because I have limited space I'm working with at the back, I had to not just make them close, but also overlap some um, cornrow piece on the other. So because of the style I'm doing, at some point I even had two different needles on the opposite sides of the wig cap to make the work easier for me and I don't have to start cutting thread, knotting the thread again to start on another place and things like that. Remember I mentioned earlier in the video that there will be no need to finish braiding the cornrow, rather to finish it when pinned on the mannequin so that way one would be able to get the accurate length they want because as you can see here i'm doing zigzag on one part there's just no way i would have been able to know the exact length 
to do for this zigzag so it will come out having equal length with the other braids so the idea is to finish it on the mannequin that way you are seeing exactly the length you want and the length you are braiding so just pay attention to the video so you see how and where i place the remaining cornrow braids After I was done, I used scissors to trim the frontal part, but you can be sure I used my usual method to trim the other parts, which is the fire method. I didn't use the fire method at the frontal because the frontal is really sensitive and I did not want fire burning what it's not supposed to burn. I gotta save me from myself. So I went ahead to sew the band the wee cap came with on the frontal, so as to give that frontal part some sort of balance.
looking at where the band is sewn on the wig, you can imagine the same position on your head. It's not the base of your head, no, but it's slightly above the base of the head. So using a measuring tape, I measured from one point on that position to the next point. For me, the measurement gave me 6 inches, but whatever the measurement gives you, divide it into 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. That 3 is the number of inches I used to measure the band that I cut out and sewed on the wig. Now, you guys can also tell that the band is not sewn where band is regularly sewn on a wig. And that's because if I had sewn the band on that position, which is where the frontal is, the wig wouldn't have laid properly on the head. So the idea behind sewing the band at this lower position is so that that place shrinks in, the, in its measurements and then it fits properly on the head. So when you're wearing the wig, the band does not hang separately from the wig. You know, ordinarily for regular wigs, you wear, you put on your wig and then you hang the band on the base of your head. But this one, you're going to wear it as if the band is sewn on the wig cap. So, you know, the band is not hanging separately. You're wearing it together on the head so that it can actually have effect on that position. That it can actually shrink the, um, the width of that position. So we've come to the end of the tutorial guys i hope you really enjoyed what you just saw please do well to give the video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel at this point you should know i put out really dope tutorials so subscribe to my channel share the video to friends family loved ones and if possible full so long as you know they're going to enjoy the video as much as you did i would really really appreciate it Till next time guys, stay blessed, stay out of trouble, stay safe and I love you all as always. Bye bye.